good evening everybody i am uh, very happy to in, uh, welcome you all to this uh, first ever pukina that uh, has been organized by the uh, psc tech alumni association uh, chennai chapter so the uh, chennai chapter is uh, headed by our president ratna and uh, uh, our secretary feben and uh, we ha have been doing uh, we have we have been a very active chapter i would like love to say and every month we have uh, you know something or the other happening uh, 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 live events when uh, before all the uh, you know the pandemic happened uh, we used to have um, uh, knowledge sharing events and uh, uh, other uh, you know get togethers and everything uh, and now we have been doing a lot of online events uh, something happening every month something where we can all meet each other and uh, learn something new so this program today is about cooking so cooking is a very integral part of our everyday life uh, we all spend uh at least our better halves or uh, uh we spend uh, quite a lot of time in the kitchen and um, today's guest is mr ramki and he is going to show us how you can spend um less time in the kitchen uh, how you can uh, make more um dishes a lot of tasty dishes healthy dishes in a short uh, period of time so uh, i would like to introduce uh, ramkrishnan alias uh, ramki to you or opus uh, ramki as he is more popularly known so he is an engineer he is a mech engineer from psg tech uh, he graduated in 1989 and uh, he uh, did his mba from uh, xlri and uh, he was interested in uh, uh, cooking and so he wanted to introduce uh, he believes that uh, anywhere anytime anyone should be able to cook great food with great ease so he sold his e learning uh, startup and he uh, got full time into his passion passion which was cooking so he I came up with a batch of one page cookbooks so where in one single page you you have uh, 1000 recipes so that is how i first got introduced to him i'll come back to that later and then after a decade after that he uh, introduced opos and opos is today a, a quite a big uh, popular uh, movement they have uh, released books they are they are in the process of designing their own uh, set of uh, 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 cut uh, sorry cooking utensils they have facebook groups youtube channels everything which we will share with you uh, soon so he is now a consultant and a columnist and he is the ceo of uh, pizza republic and opus uh, visionaries and uh, he has a record uh, where he has uh, single handedly cooked a uh, 10 course marriage feast for 500 people in 3 hours single handedly on his own using opus which is the uh, technique that we are uh, part of the technique that we are going to learn which is uh, one pot one shot cooking and uh, he uh, his first book five minute magic has been an international uh, best seller and uh, he has a second book called the story of india through food which has won uh, to a 2020 amazon uh, award and uh, his third book also has uh, been published by harper collins and uh, he, his method of cooking is being used in thousands of households across the world and uh, i'm sure we today we will also learn a lot of uh, 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 uh you know uh, value addition from him uh, so ramki i just have a few questions before we get started um so from engineering to uh, cooking so when or how did you discover your passion uh when i uh, during the e learning phase when i set up a company abroad in bahrain mm -hmm. i got stuck without access to good indian food okay. and um, i had a naive belief that all you need to do to cook is to refer to cookbooks just follow them to the letter and good food is guaranteed mm -hmm. i realized that that's not going to happen whatever described in the books was almost impossible to follow after a few months of experimentation i realized that the problem is not with me the problem is with the books the instructions right. were, were so vague and uh, the books contradicted each other so much that uh, it was virtually impossible to follow these instructions so i i kind of thought that there must be a better way of doing it and that germ of an idea kind of germinated into opus of indian state wow okay wonderful so i remember reading in one of your posts or uh, books i am not sure where you say that uh, cooking is a science and not an art can you uh, right. tell us about that right See, the thing is that cooking has been so ritualized, so mystified. It's basic science. I see cooking as nothing more than a production engineering problem. So we complicate it with all sorts of rituals, all sorts of uh, 
uh, mystifications. So there is no need for all that. At its heart, cooking is extremely simple. When you look at it as an engineering problem, when you look at it as uh, a science, then a uh, lot of these uh, arcane rules and the rituals just fall away. And um, the inherent simplicity of cooking almost anything is exposed. Wow. Okay. So my first um, trust with uh, you or your my introduction to you was uh, when I randomly came on uh, across uh, a one-page recipe for rasam on uh, the uh, internet. So in this one page, there were uh, 1,000 ways to make uh, different rasams. And I was really impressed with the way you had broken down uh, the rasam into three building blocks. Um, can you tell us a bit about that? Okay. See, when you stop thinking in terms of recipes and cuisines and start thinking in terms of building blocks of food, then your whole perspective towards food and the cooking changes. Right. So if you talk about rasam, for example, the basis of all rasams is some kind of a flavored stock. The stock might be flavored with lentils, it might be flavored with herbs and spices, whatever it is. Some kind of a flavored stock, some kind of additives, and some kind of garnish. That's about it. So you can have a series of flavored stocks, a series of garnishes, a series of additives. You can mix and match them in any way without even knowing uh, what cuisine it belongs to or what recipe it belongs to. All you need to do is just mix and match these building blocks and you're guaranteed of a recipe. So this right. theme-based approach cuts across cuisines. Once you remember the theme, it sets you free. You don't need to be uh, bound to recipes or cuisines anymore. You can really mix and match stuff and create almost anything you like uh, without worrying about whether it will taste good or is it authentic or is it traditional. Okay, wow, wonderful. So uh, after my brush with that paper, I started following you uh, closely on um, uh, you know, social media. And uh, so that is how I started going to Opos, uh, basically. And uh, Opos has been a lifesaver for me, one pot, one shot, where I put everything into the cooker and uh, close it. So I've been uh, an evangelist for you, I, I could say. I've been like you know convincing so many of my uh, friends about uh, how easy it is to cook and uh, I've, uh, my, my ch children actually like my uh, the biryani especially that I make with uh, Opos. So how did you come across uh, or formulate or start Opos? Um, <clears throat> after these one page cookbooks where you start looking at world cuisines as themes mm -hmm. then you need a way to translate these themes into food. You need a foolproof way to convert this concept into reality, okay? And uh, that, that, that is a big challenge. Let's assume that you are trying to duplicate your mother's cooking. Mm -hmm. You're just standing beside her and you are trying to duplicate exactly what she does. In theory, it should be possible, right? In theory, it should be possible to exactly duplicate what she does. You right. take the same kadai, you make, use the same heat source, you put in the same amount of ingredients, whatever she does, you mimic as closely as possible. Technically, you should be able to replicate her, correct? Right. At least in theory. But unfortunately, that does not happen in practice because the cooking conditions are not uh, similar. You'll be cooking at one kadai, you'll be cooking at one heat source, you might be in a different place altogether where the atmospheric pressure is different, consequently, the boiling point of water is different, the ambient temperature is different. So the initial conditions are very different. So this is the reason why people say, whatever I do, even if I follow my mother's recipe exactly, uh, the result is not uh, what she gets. It's very different. And people kind of uh, rationalize it by saying that she has experience or she puts in a lot of love. All this is nonsense. All this is complete nonsense. If you are technically able to duplicate exactly what she does, if your cooking conditions are exactly identical, then your result should be exactly identical. It's right. basic science. There is no, no way your results can be anything different from what she gets. The reason you are not able to get it is because our cooking conditions are not identical. So okay. this was the first key realization. So I realized that once we need to standardize cooking conditions, by standardizing cooking conditions, I mean, uh, I mean that we need to standardize equipment. We, right. Whatever is happening in my pot should be happening in your pot irrespective of where you are. Once you are able to do that, we have crossed the first huge hurdle. So whatever I do, you should be able to. 
Right. So that is what we are going to see today with uh, lesson one. There are just two lessons to unlock all world's physics. And lesson okay. one is standardizing the equipment. Once we standardize the equipment, <coughs> then you should be able to replicate what uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing in my kitchen. And lesson two is we should be able to standardize the technique. Mm -hmm. So now your mother, um, let's say, even if you're trying to mimic your mother, the assumption is that your mother is a good cook, which might not be true. So we need to learn to mimic, uh, not persons, but mm -hmm. core techniques. So the core technique of cooking food, of bringing food alive uh, without the excessive use of masalas is uh, stir frying, barbecuing, drilling, where the inherent uh, goodness of food is intensive. Right. Food comes alive. You do not, you, if you see a Chinese master stir frying, they do not overload it with masalas. It's put a spoon on a very high heat for a very short time without any water. You do the same thing with tandoori cooking, you do the same thing with barbecuing. And these are cooking techniques which make food come alive without smothering it with the masalas. Right. So we tried to simulate this technique uh, and we invented a brand new technique called pressure baking, okay. so which is uh, one of the key techniques covering the Oko's movement. So lesson one is about standardizing the equipment and lesson two is about standardizing the technique. And both these lessons can be taught to anyone in five to 10 minutes. Once you understand these two lessons, then you can cook almost anything you like across physics. Uh, you have learned cooking. With these two lessons, you have learned cooking. It's as simple as this. Okay, okay. Uh, wonderful. So can we get started with the lessons? We are uh, impatient to get started. So, uh, yeah. Madhu, sorry. Uh, so, uh, Madhu, one of our uh, active alumni, uh, he's part of our executive committee of the uh, Chennai chapter. So, he has uh, volunteered to cook along uh, with us today. So, uh, Ramki, we are ready whenever we can start. Okay, now I'm ready. So, let me just change the focus to my table. Um, what I have here is a standardized uh, pressure cooker. Now, this is a cooker which is designed exclusively for Wokus, which is able to withstand very high heat, which is able to cook without water. What you need to do to pass lesson one is to standardize the equipment. So all you have to do is start with quarter cup of water. Okay. So add quarter cup of water to a two liter pressure cooker. Whatever pressure cooker you might have. Close this and put it on high, whatever you think highest, and start the timer. So I want you to do this with whatever pressure cooker you have as long as it is a two liter pressure. The goal is to get the first whistle between one and two minutes. Once you do that, our equipments are standardized. What, what is happening inside my pot has to happen inside your pot. Are you, I'm not sure if you're able to see my setup. Yeah, yeah, we can see it clearly. Oh, great. So if you have a two liter pressure cooker, please go ahead with add 60 ml water cup of water to your two liter pressure cooker. Close it, put it on whatever high heat, the highest heat possible in your heat source. And start the stoppage. Madhu, you are supposed to do it along with them, Madhu. You are supposed to do it along with them, Madhu. You are supposed to do I wonder how many of the uh, participants are uh, cooking along with us. Uh, please raise your hands if you are doing this cook along. Madhu, you have to close it and put it on uh, heat. Amma. On for needing On Amma. There you go. So that is the first whistle. Switch off your stopwatch. And you should be able to get the first whistle between one and two minutes. The minute you do that, 
then you have cleared lesson one. Then okay. all our cooking uh, pots are being standardized. What is happening inside my pot has to happen inside pot. Now this is the <coughs> the standardization is the core of it. Once you have passed this lesson, you don't need to be a Now, if you are comfortable with this, we have standardized the equipment, we'll move to standardizing the technique. So are you guys doing this or do you want me to wait till you complete this? No, I think we can start uh, with the next lesson. I don't think he has switched on his uh, on oh. anything. Lab. Okay, he's this is on dead, this is waiting for the whistle. Okay. Uh, Madhu Ninga, volume, you can talk. Now, I can't uh, stress the importance of this lesson enough. This is the biggest breakthrough. Yes. What we have just done is to ensure that irrespective of where we are, what is mm -hmm. happening inside our cooking pots are mm -hmm. completely standardized. What is happening inside my pot has to happen inside your pot. So any recipe which works for me has to work for you. Lesson one is about standardizing the equipment to ensure that all our cooking conditions are identical. Once this happens, then what happens inside my pot has to happen inside your pot. So I keep stressing this because cooking is just that. Uh, it's not that, uh, it's just, it's just that we are complicating it with various other foods. But the basic premise is once this lesson is clear, then we are all on the same page. So it is very important. We use similar heat sources. We use a similar cooking equipment. We standardize it. We standardize it with uh, opus cooker. Okay. Now lesson two is about the technique where uh, you get introduced to a technique called pressure baking. Now this is a, a fundamental shift. This is a completely new cooking technique. Most people see opus as a dump ball in a pressure cooker kind of cooking. It's the complete opposite of it. Now, pressure baking is a technique which simulates uh, stir frying, which simulates uh, tandoori cooking, which simulates barbecuing, which uh, brings out the inherent uh, goodness of food, which maximizes the inherent goodness of food. By cooking it at a very high heat for a very short time in its own juices. Now, let me repeat this. Almost all food can be made to come alive by cooking it at a very high heat for a very short time in its own juices. Every single vegetable you can think of, every single seafood you can think of, almost all meats you can think of, all the building blocks of it come alive when you cook them at a very high heat for a very short time in its own juices. Now this is dramatically visible in the vegetables which are color coded. Mm -hmm. So the goal of all cooking is to ensure that the mm -hmm. color is not lost. Mm -hmm. But in this technique, you will see that the color is not only uh, not lost, but the color is dramatically intensive. The food comes alive. Mm -hmm. So this is what we are going to see now. Um, this technique is called pressure baking. It's the complete opposite of pressure cooking. In pressure cooking, we cook with a lot of water over low heat for a long time. In pressure baking, we completely try to cut out the water and cook on a very high heat for a very short time in food's own juices. So food gets cooked in steam. We use pressure as a leveler to ensure that our cooking conditions are identical. Okay. So in lesson two, what we are going to do is we are going to use the same water cup of water, which is completely optional. It's just used as an insurance. So add the same water cup of water. I'm going to add two cups of beans or whatever vegetables you like. Though I would strongly suggest you stick to this uh, lesson without any change. Mm -hmm. Water cup of water, two cups of chopped beans, which is roughly around 250 grams. Close it, cook it on the same high heat at which you standardize your equipment in lesson one. Okay, mm -hmm. that's exactly what I'm going to do. Okay. And at least whatever pressure is here, open this. Okay. Now, here, let me just. Yeah. Here is a quarter cup of water which I use for lesson one. I'm going to take half of that away. So we are left with maybe just a tablespoon or so, which is good enough. 
This is two cups of beans. I have the two cups of beans here. I'll preserve some so that you can check the color back later. Mm -hmm. Add whatever masalas you like over this or mix with this, doesn't matter. Close this. Cook on the same high heat at which you standardize. Mm -hmm. Then start the timer. Okay. What you are about to see here is all you need to ensure good food for the rest of your life. Every single vegetable can be cooked exactly the same way. Every single seafood, almost all meats, barring the tough meats like uh, cartilage laden meats, almost uh, every other major. <laughs> uh, Madhu, I think we can hear you now. Video on printing start from now. Kathy, are you able to see my setup? Yes, yes, we can see that one. It's clear. Oh, okay. So let me repeat this technique again. The first technique taught you how to standardize the cooking equipment. To ensure that we are all on the same page and what happens inside my pot will happen inside your. This second technique standardizes the technique of pressure baking, where we teach you to cook food at a very high heat for a very short time in its own juices. Unfortunately, pressure cookers are not designed to work this way. They are not designed to uh, be used on a high heat. They are not designed to be used without water. When you try doing this, you will have a problem of food burning or the safety wall or melting and stuff like that. So we tied up with uh, Prestige and Butterfly and uh, got the cookware specially designed for us. So these are modified pressure cookers. We call them pressure bakers. Mm -hmm. These are modified pressure cookers which can withstand high heat and which can cook without water. Okay. Uh, Madhu, you beans putting la cooker. La. Ramki, can you just walk him through it? Uh, Madhu, all you have to do is add the same quarter cup of water, yes. add two cups of beans, close, yes. switch on, yes. and, and let it go for three minutes. Amma. Full high heat level. High heat level. Okay. Great. First time now, putting a kaya adapt trying it with a path upon You know, while the food is cooking, uh, Ramki, I have another question, which uh, might be a little controversial. Yeah. I remember reading once, again, in one of your posts, that uh, yeah. pickles are a form of concentrated gravy. gravy sorry. Uh, so can you uh, elaborate on that? Uh, uh, sorry, what is that? Uh, okay, sorry. I think it's time. Uh, it's fine. That, that is the first question. Um, hang on, Kathy. Uh, I think that the sound is... Uh, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. It's fine. need to hear you properly. Okay. So, Madhu, you have to go to the other side. Okay. No, no, wait. You have to go to the other side. How do we wait? Two is good enough. Two or three. Okay. So, Ramki, I mean, Madhu has got four whistles already, I think. Yeah. Just switch it off. Switch it off. Switch off and just release the pressure. In case you are... Pressure release, Madhu. You have to go to the other side. Switch off. Please remove the pressure. Please remove the pressure. Please remove the pressure. That's it. Now it's taken four minutes. That is all it takes to cook almost anything. And you'll see that the color has intensity. Okay. Okay, excellent. Now, if it just moves away, it'll stop it. Now, with these two lessons, I'm going to tell you how to how you can do almost anything you want. Go ahead, you want to ask me something? Yeah. Um, 
Okay, so before that, uh, Madhu, can we look at your pins for a closer look? Yeah. I don't know if you see it. No, you can bring the cooker closer, Nanika. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. Ah, okay. Fine. So this is cooked. So this is fully cooked uh, beans, Ranki. This can be used for anything. Yeah. Completely. That's perfectly well cooked beans. Okay. So if you want to add a porilla, we can add a tadka. See, the thing is, you want to convert it into porilla across the seeds. You just mix in some coconut oil. This becomes a milk from the Kerala you just mix in some grated coconut, this becomes a toran again from uh, Kerala cuisine. You mix in some parpu pudi, this becomes a puditua mm -hmm. from uh, Tamil cuisine. Or you mix in a basic tadka, this becomes a dry curry. So mm -hmm. this, this is the basis. What you have just learned is to cook a key building block of food. Now, cooking is all about this. It's not about masalas. It's not about combinations. It's about cooking the key building blocks of food perfectly. It's about ensuring that the inherent goodness of food is not destroyed by overcooking or undercooking. Now, this removes skill from the equation. Whether you do this, your child does it, your wife does it, your mom does it, the results are going to be exactly the same as long as you follow lesson one and lesson two. Right? right. Mm -hmm. Now, you can convert this into anything across species by just varying one layer. Let's assume we need to convert this into, let us say, a sambar. Okay. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is add a layer of cooked dal, mm -hmm. tamarind paste, and sambar powder over this. Mm -hmm. Pressure bake, everything, mix in water, this becomes a sambar. See, the building blocks of cuisines are very, very simple. Almost every, every South Indian dish you can think of is composed from four building blocks. One is tamarind, one is yogurt, one is coconut paste, and one is dal. Okay. So let me repeat this. Mm -hmm. Tamarind, yogurt, coconut paste, and dal. Every single curry you have ever eaten is mm -hmm. nothing but a combination of these four building blocks. You take okay. tamarind paste alone, mm -hmm. it is permanent. You right. mix tamarind paste along with dal, it becomes mm -hmm. sambar. You mix dal along with coconut paste, it becomes kutu. You mix coconut paste along with yogurt, it becomes more or aviyal or whatever you can think of. Mm -hmm. Any combination of these four building blocks will give you almost every single curry you have eaten all these things. It's ultra simple. And the same theme holds good for North Indian cuisine. North India, they do not have tamarind. So instead of tamarind, they have caramelized tomato. They have caramelized tomato, in North India, they do not have coconut. Instead of coconut, they have nut paste. They have caramelized tomato, caramelized onions, nut paste, yogurt, and dal. Now, these are the building blocks of every single North Indian curry you can think of. Mm -hmm. Just caramelized uh, onions gives you dopiasa. A mix of caramelized onions and caramelized tomatoes gives you masalas. Right. Just caramelized tomatoes gives you makani. And just yogurt gives you kadi. So, the, 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 stop thinking in terms of recipes and start looking at the recipes. I'm sorry, Kathy, you are saying something? I'm sorry. Uh, no, I think Madhu is... Uh, Madhu, are you trying to say something or is that background noise? Okay. okay. So this is very interesting how you break uh, food down into building blocks. Um, so the uh, uh, so uh, based on uh, I mean uh, the question that I was asking you earlier. So in the building blocks under uh, like uh, what I had mentioned earlier is that on your Facebook post once I had read that uh, the pickle only it's a concentrated form of gravy of the inter. So uh, can you uh, elaborate a bit on that? What's what's it again? Can you come again? Uh, the pickle any pickle it's a concentrated form of gravy. Correct. Correct. Like. See. When you, when you look at stuff like, let us say, mean param or vatta param or kara param, now these are nothing but semi-pickles. Now, what is the difference between a pickle and a gravy? The pickle is designed to be to be used for a long, longer period and is right. designed to be used without a refrigeration. Mm -hmm. So how do you ensure that uh, a gravy becomes a pickle? By overloading it with spices. Just add in more spices, more salt, any gravy will become a pickle. It's as simple as that. Right. Now, these things are important. 
salt is immortal. Um, acid is immortal. Vinegar or uh, tamarind, uh, tamarind based spoils. Let's say vinegar. Vinegar, salt, sugar, these are immortal. They last right. for years. They don't need refrigeration. In any pickle, we transfer a part of this immortality into food. Now, when you steep food, when you cover the food with salt or sugar, you transfer a part of that immortality to food. So in all pickles, what we do is we add an overload of salt, we add an overload of acids to ensure that the spoilage from outside and the spoilage from inside are minimized. Microorganisms cannot thrive in a salty environment or an acidic environment. Mm -hmm. And uh, food's own juices, food's own enzymes uh, will start spoiling after a period of time. If you just keep a mango on your countertop, the mango's own enzyme will cause it to rot from inside. So in a pickle, what we do is we draw these enzymes by adding salt. Right. Okay. And yeah. when you when you sun dry fish, for example, you pack it with salt, the salt draws out the juices from inside. And uh, it creates an environment so that microbes do not thrive. So the way to convert any gravy into a pickle is to add more spices, uh, preferably antibacterial spices like mustard powder, turmeric powder, add more salt, and add more acid. So the common form of adding more acid in our cuisine is either adding tamarind or in some cases, vinegar. It's pretty simple. So right. do not go by names. Do not go by gravy or pickle or whatever. Just think in terms of the key building blocks. <coughs> okay. So lesson one, standardize the equipment. Lesson okay. two, teaches you to cook any major food perfectly. This okay. is all cooking is all about. Now with these two lessons, you can cook anything from any cuisine without even seeing it or seeing it. Okay, that's awesome. So my own experience with Opos um, is what introduced me to the world of cooking. And so it became a Sunday ritual, actually. So, uh, and in fact, the best part of cooking Opos is that I hardly even step into the kitchen. So me and the kids, we sit in the uh, dining table and we take the two liter cooker and then uh, we make normally biryani on Sundays. So uh, we add the rice, the meat or the vegetables, and there's a list of uh, the uh, ingredients. So my girls love finding the ingredients and measuring it out and putting it inside. So we do all this sitting in the fan under the dining table. We put everything into the cooker, close it, and then I go leave it on the kitchen, uh, you know, on the gas and switch it on. That's the way I make biryani. And this takes me hardly like, you know, 10 minutes. So uh, this simplification, I think, is, uh, is, is a complete bone for people who want to, you know, go this, living alone or anybody else. This simply allow me to interrupt you for a minute. Yeah, yeah. There is a style of cooking called one pot cooking, where you right. dump everything into a cooker, close it, and switch it on. Right. That is also a kind of opus. Okay, it's one mm -hmm. pot, one shot. Right. But it's a complete opposite of whatever I taught you when pressure mm -hmm. baking. Okay. So in in recipes like this, for argument's sake, you can put everything, cover it with water, close it, and let it go for uh, five or six minutes. That couldn't be cooked. But right. the thing is that you will not be able to maximize the inherent goodness of food. Vegetables will make a mushy, overcooked, mm -hmm. cook their biryanis or not something people like. Mm -hmm. Everything becomes mushy. Okay. Right. Yeah, you, you do not get the texture of a thumb biryani. Mm -hmm. Whereas in Oko's techniques, what we do is not pressure cooking at all. This is a key difference which people fail to spot. Just right. because we are using a pressure cooker, people mm -hmm. assume that we are pressure cooking. It's the complete opposite of pressure cooking. In okay. Opus cooking, we use pressure mm -hmm. just as a leveling device, just to ensure that our cooking conditions are standard, just to isolate the atmospheric pressure from the equation. Whether you are sitting and cooking in Chennai at one atmospheric level or sitting on the top of Mount Everest at uh, uh, 0.3 atmosphere pressure, Mm -hmm. The cooking conditions inside our pots are exactly the same once our pots are pressurized. In Opus, we do not cook with water. We cook with steam. This is the reason why I talked about cooking with in cooking food in its own juices. Okay. Because if you remember your basic thermodynamic lesson, mm -hmm. the heat carrying capacity of steam does not vary much with pressure. Whether the steam is at uh, sea, sea level or the steam is at... Uh, uh, half an atmosphere or point to an atmosphere, the heat carrying capacity of steam is almost the same. 
So okay. in pressure, in opos, we do not cook with water. We see water as an enemy of cooking. Every drop of water added destroys the inherent goodness of food. So we try to cook with very little or no water at all. This is a key difference which you need to internalize. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. Um, okay. So we have quite a few questions that uh, people have been asking. I'll just uh, read them out to you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Somebody has asked for the biryani recipe in Opos. Um, so what we will do is we'll get a list of uh, URLs, the different channels where uh, all these uh, you know resources are available from uh, Ramki, and we will be emailing it to you uh, to all the participants. Uh, so I think that answers that uh, question. So somebody has asked, doesn't cooking for a long time will it not destroy the nutrients? Cooking for a for a high heat. Okay. Now this is a common myth that cooking on a high heat destroys nutrients. No, cooking on a high heat brings food alive. When you when you see food that is stir fried, you'll see that you can. I mean, these things can be, these are not stuff for argument. These can be nutritionally tested. Mm -hmm. What we have seen repeatedly is that it's not the intensity of heat that matters. It's the duration of heat. When you cook on a low heat for a long time, mm -hmm. then everything gets destroyed. When you cook on a high heat for a short time, the inherent goodness is preserved and maximized. When food is stir frying, in stir frying, you are cooking food on a high heat for a short time. The inherent goodness is preserved. Vegetables are nice, crunchy, colorful, juicy, flavor. But when okay. you put it in a, a boiling water for mm -hmm. maybe half an hour or so and slowly simmering water, everything becomes mush. Right. So the intensity of heat does not matter. The duration of heat matters a lot. You need to cook food at a high heat for a short time in its own juices. Make no mistake about this. This is basic science and this can be easily tested. You can uh, take a traditionally simmered uh, cup of vegetables and compare it with stir fried vegetables or fresh baked vegetables. Go get it nutritionally tested, and the results will be chalk and cheese. Okay, okay, that's wonderful. Okay. Uh, so Kumar has an interesting comment. Uh, he says that uh, this could be this could become a nice uh, family activity, which the family could you know go do together. Some he's comparing it to. The uh, you know open yard barbecues that happen in the uh, Western world. Exactly. So, now right. this what we have repeatedly seen is that Ufos is fast becoming a, a women empowerment program. Um, it sets uh, women free from the kitchen. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever used to take them an hour or two hours is uh, done in around 10-15 minutes. And this also removes a toxic myth that uh, kitchen uh, cooking is a woman's job. Now, right. anyone can do what I did. It doesn't mm -hmm. need your mother's love. It doesn't need anyone's affection. Anyone can layer it. Anyone can switch it on. And uh, uh, this whole concept of uh, it needs a woman's touch or mother's love is, is a toxic myth. I think mm -hmm. these myths are kind of created to keep women chained to the kitchen. That mm -hmm. maka, hatka, kanaka myth is a very toxic myth. So it uh, basically confines the woman to a kitchen. Uh, mm -hmm. Myths like that propagate the idea that uh, the uh, job for a woman is in the kitchen and a man can, cannot do a decent job. Now, when you democratize a technique like this, when you ensure that everyone can cook and cooking becomes a democratic function activity, you don't need a kitchen. This can happen right on your dining table. Right, right. Okay. So uh, another question I have is, okay, so now we have used uh, two cups of beans and uh, we have done this. So how scalable is this? Now, let's say we have five guests or 10 guests at home. Uh, how do we now, do this? The equipment which we have designed is to be used for small families. Mm -hmm. Now, you can scale it up here, can scale it up marginally, but the goal is to ensure that no vegetable is cooked beyond five minutes. The minute you cook anything beyond five minutes, then you are uh, you're ending up with mush. So there are two ways to scale up. One is that use two different pots okay. or cook multiple times. Mm -hmm. Now, this is like, let us say, making a dosa. How do you scale up a dosa? You don't right. put one kg of batter on the dosa tawa all at once. You right. want to scale up dosa, use two dosa tawas. Right. Or have a bigger tawa. So, right. we use we do both. Where uh, cocos cookware is used for commercial uh, cooking. Mm -hmm. 
like the Indian Army or the Akshay Patra Foundation, we have uh, bigger equipment to do okay. that. But okay. at home, you either use multiple pots or cook multiple times using the same pot. But mm -hmm. this cookware, whatever I had shown you right now, is good enough for a small family. Right. Uh, four to five member family, this is all you need. A couple of pots is all you need. Mm -hmm. Okay. So coming back to this again, if I'm using the same pot, uh, let's say, so the two cups of uh, beans and a quarter cup of water, can it just be doubled as, you know, four cups of beans and half cup, half a cup of water? You, the thing about standardized recipes is that you need to follow them to the letter. Okay. You cannot change anything. The whole idea of be skilling mm -hmm. uh, comes at a price. The price is that you see the recipe, you follow the recipe, till really you understand what's happening. Right. It's not like uh, instead of adding two cups of beans, uh, you just halve every, half everything or you just double everything. Uh, it doesn't mean that the recipe would work. No. Okay. It has to be tried, tested. It's almost like a chemistry experiment. Scaling right. up everything might not give you the same results. Mm -hmm. So till you understand what is happening, <clears throat> just grit your teeth and follow the recipe. There are lots of standardized recipes, thousands of standardized recipes on the YouTube channel, app, everything. Just grit your teeth and follow it. Mm -hmm. Try to scale it up marginally. Try to change one thing at a time. You'll know mm -hmm. what is happening inside. Then right. take a call on whether you can stick with it or not. Right, right. Do not okay. make any drastic changes. Do not change too many things all at once. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice. Okay. Um, so Jayanti has mentioned that uh, kira and kesri are something are easy dishes that cook easily. So is that uh, right? What what is that? Kira and uh, kesri are dishes that can be done easily through this method? There are there are no easy dishes or tough dishes in Opus. A mutton right. biryani is as easy as beans. A Mysore bag is as easy as beans. It's right. about... A, it, a biryani calls for a different set of ingredients. The cooking mm -hmm. technique is blissfully unaware of the complexity of the recipes. In every single recipe you can think of, you add a set of ingredients and you press a button. So mm -hmm. what is easy and what is a tough recipe? Nothing at all. Every recipe is on the same difficulty. Okay, okay, wonderful. Okay, so does anybody else have any other questions? Uh, you can raise your hands or you can type it in our uh, Q&A chat box. Um, so like does I mentioned- pressure, Does pressure destroy nutrients? This is another pet myth which is propagated. When you right. cook pressure, pressure cooking is unnatural. When you cook anything under pressure, it destroys nutrients. <laughs> this is probably the uh, craziest myth of the ball. Every cooking is pressure cooking. Wherever you cook, mm -hmm. the atmosphere is pressing down on food with one atmosphere with 50 pounds per square inch. So right. every there is nothing called a, a pressure-free cooking. The only pressure-free cooking which can happen is probably in the outer space. So if pressure cooking is harmful for your health, mm -hmm. then you all of us should probably cook on mountain tops or in outer space. <laughs> so pressure has absolutely no effect on nutrients. If you take a tomato mm -hmm. and crush it under a hundred ton press. Mm -hmm. and compare the nutritional profiles for both the raw tomato and the crushed tomato, you'll okay. find that they're absolutely the same. We think of uh, uh, the nutritive stuff as some fragile entities which get decomposed with heat and pressure. That's not mm -hmm. true at all. Okay, heat right. and pressure have very little effect on uh, nutrition. Okay, okay, great. So we're getting some pointed questions like, um, how do we make mushroom soup or uh, is there other guidelines for starters? So It's very simple, Karthi. Every single recipe you can think of mm -hmm. has been standardized in the app, is detailed in the cookbooks. All you have to do is take the standardized equipment, take the list of ingredients mentioned in the recipe and follow the layering method, which is mentioned. That. That's it. It's ultra simple. You want to convert this into a soup, you just start with a layer of oil or butter. You just add mushrooms whatever spices you want on top of that, go for the same three or four vessels, switch off, open, blend everything with milk or cream, it becomes mushroom soup. Wow, okay. Okay, that's wonderful. Okay. Um, so, okay, so we are almost uh, near the end of our uh, webinar. So what I would like to uh, reiterate is that um, uh, to all the uh, people who have joined us, uh, once the uh, webinar is over, we will be sending out an email which has all the links uh, where uh, Ranki's resources are available, uh, where you, you can find his books or his uh, utensils or his uh, recipes for various things, uh, ranging from uh, Mysore pa to uh, you know, biryani to soup to uh, anything that you want to cook. So we will be sharing that with you. 
And um, I think this has been a wonderful uh, session, especially uh, being one conducted by an engineer for a group of engineers. We have used more technical and engineering terms rather than you know cooking terms, atmospheric pressure and all that. So I think that way this uh, turns out to be quite a unique uh, you know. Cook. And we called came up with the term cooking hour for this. So as live cooking again has been a new experience for us. Uh, so your uh, final remarks, uh, Ramki, your feedback. Keep it simple. Do not let the fancy terms or fancy chefs or authorities cook you. Cooking mm -hmm. is absolutely simple. Traditional cooking is like learning to draw a freehand circle. Okay, there is no pretty way you can master it, even if you are at it for years together. Every person will teach you a different method of doing it, and every person will swear that their method is the most traditional, most authentic way to do it. What I have just demonstrated, Popo's is like giving you a compass. That's it. So okay. with the right technique, with the right equipment, we have solved the problem of cooking. Anything, any cuisine on earth can be cooked exactly the same way by people who have not even seen it, who have not even experienced it. You don't need to see it or see a recipe or experience the recipe to cook it. All you have to do is just follow the instructions by me. Right. So once you stand, you standardize equipment, you standardize recipes, then right. cooking is no more a problem for you. Anything you want is as simple as following a series of instructions. Okay, okay, that's wonderful. So I hope this session has, uh, you know, shown us that cooking uh, is not a chore. It, it's something simple. That is some. It's an activity that the whole family can enjoy together and uh, spend less time in the kitchen. I hope this uh, has shown us. Uh, how easy it is to uh, make a range of dishes. We are talking about anything from Kanyakumari to Kashmir. Almost every state has so much of, uh, you know, different uh, cuisines and everything is simple to uh, make using this uh, method. So I hope uh, more of the uh, women folks spend less time in the kitchen. I hope uh, more of the men folks start spending more time in the kitchen or he helping with the cooking. Uh, so I think that is uh, that brings us to the end of the uh, session. We have no more questions also. and But we have been getting good feedback, uh, Ramki, on the question and answers that uh, many men uh, are saying that, you know, they would like to go try out. So like I said, we will send out an email uh, soon with all the resources available so that uh, you can uh, go ahead and start cooking. So thank you very much for all the uh, people who have joined us uh, this evening. We hope that you uh, find this very uh, useful and informative. And uh, so happy cooking. Uh, thank you, Ranki, so much for uh, joining us and sharing your knowledge. It has been a great session and uh, it has freed us from the kitchen. So, uh, and it's, okay, it's demystified cooking for engineers. That's a feedback that I've just got. So thank you very much for this. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Kathy, for making this happen and uh, keep coming up with interesting stuff like this. It was really sure. good connecting with all you guys. Thank you very much. Right, right. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Uh, happy cooking and have a happy weekend. Thank you. Bye.